Good day, viewers, and welcome to another on-site SA soccer show. Paul is unfortunately not with us due to car problems, and joining us shortly will be our regular UK correspondent Stevie Braham, and hopefully you'll find us another one or two because it's his birthday. But we kick off as always with our post-net last one standing competition, and heading into week nine, we had two entries. Murray Dan and Tanil Verners. As a competition, this round was split over two weeks. Murray was successful on Chelsea. Tanil has picked Brighton to beat Wolves on Monday. So if they don't win, Murray will be our winner. Our third competition started over the weekend and we had 251 entries. The successful guys were on Chelsea and Man City, while the guys that went out were on Aston Villa, Man United, Tottenham, Everton, Fulham and Newcastle. We are available for people to enter this weekend. Lunch time is closing time. We now go over to our UK man Stevie Bram. Stevie, all the best. Thanks, Marge. Morning. Okay, we won't uh, talk about our beloved uh, Bafana Bafana who missed a penalty and were really that. disappointing, yeah. but uh, big game for us on Sunday. Have you watched much of the AFCON? Yeah, it, it's sort of on, uh, you know, they're showing all the games, so I've, I've yeah. caught uh, bits of most of them. You know, I mean, at the moment, obviously, the, I guess the, the favourites, sort of teams like Senegal and Morocco have yeah. sort of stood out, but, uh, you know, they're all, they're, I think they're going to get, there'll be some tight games. Yeah, it's always a story. Group games are fairly easy, but when it gets to the knockout, so let's not get beat. But uh, one or two games I've watched, unfortunately, at 10 o'clock kickoffs. A terrible us for us, Steve. But other than Bafana, haven't really watched much. Steve, onto the Premiership. Uh, I don't see too much transfer activity. Is that because of the Asian Cup and Afcon, or is it uh, people haven't got money? I think it's a, a mixture of everything. Especially, uh, obviously, we've had the. Uh, you know, they've come out and obviously named two clubs who have broken FFP. Yeah. Um, you know, I think teams are quite cautious. But you often, what you often get is one or two biggish ones and then it frees a little bit of cash up. Yeah. But uh, so far, been very little activity and we're sort of halfway through the window. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen with the Everton and Notts Forest, the two clubs that have breached the financial fair play rule, especially Everton? Well, I, yeah, I mean, look, this is a separate breach. I mean, mm. this is obviously one year on. But obviously what Everton are saying is that surely you know, the fact that they've been punished, a lot of that in the, in the breach they're now talking about should be covered. But yeah. um, you know, I, I don't know, I, th I think they want to sort of set, make an example of, uh, of the teams and I wouldn't be at all surprised. You know, I mean, Forrest was sort of saying that you know, if they'd have sold Brennan Johnson before the transfer, you know, before the 30th of June, they'd have been okay. But that's all very well to say that. Any club could say yes. if we'd have done something. So, you know, I mean, they're talking about a six-point deduction rather than ten. Um, you know, I think it would it will hurt, definitely hurt Everton, mm. you know, to be minus 16. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, Forrest, six points, you know, it puts them um, in trouble. But I think, you know, both those teams are playing well enough. They could fight the way out of it. Yeah, no doubt about that. Steve, FA Cup replays in midweek. Uh, Wolves beat Brentford. I thought Ivan Tony may start for Brentford, but he wasn't even on the bench. No, he wasn't. Evidently, uh, this weekend is the first game he's allowed to play. Yeah. So uh, that was just a few days, one, one day too short. But I saw I saw the Bristol City West Ham game. I yeah. Thought Bristol City played really well. West Ham offered very little. They got the sort of injuries. Yeah. And uh, you know. Bristol City sort of really fought and last night I saw uh, a spirited Blackpool but yeah absolutely Forrest had that on as well bit, yeah yeah Forrest is a little bit too professional in the end yeah I was hoping I'd, we'd have the Everton Crystal Palace game on but it wasn't on here I see Everton sneaked in 1-0 yeah it's supposed to be a quite a close game yeah but uh, you know, again I don't I think both teams are probably quite pleased that they didn't have extra time yeah, no doubt about that. Steve, on to the weekend. Uh, it is the second week of the uh, of the Premiership. And our first game we kick off, we'll pull the betting up now, is Arsenal versus Crystal Palace. How do you see it going? Well, I mean, Arsenal have had a, a, a shocking couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, obviously, losing those two league games, losing to Liverpool in the Cup. You know, this, is a, this is a game, basically, it's must win for them. Yeah. Otherwise, they can find themselves just falling just a few points adrift, which uh, you know, they can't afford. You know, Palace obviously played last night. Um, 
I mean, you know, they are spirited. They've got uh, sort of Eze back, but um, I've got a feeling Arsenal will be too strong. Yeah, I agree. Five out of six wins at home. The only loss being to West Ham. You know, I think, you know, a hundred hard's which way to go, Steve. I'm gonna, I, I just don't see Palace scoring. I know they have scored a lot of goals away from home, but a Wednesday night game at Everton, an early kickoff on Saturday, I think it's, it's shocking that they've done that. But uh, I think Arsenal win 3-4-0. I think this is a game make or break for Arsenal, Steve. This is their season or their championship. Yeah. If they don't have a decent run from now on, they'll be playing for third or fourth. But 3-10 uh, to 10 is short. I took 33-10. to 10. Over two and a half goals and both teams to score? No. I think Arsenal 3-0 written all over it. A second game could be deemed a relegation uh, battle, Steve. Brentford, Notts Forest. How do you see it? <coughs> well, this is, uh, you know, it looks like Ivan Tony will be back in. Yeah. You know, I guess the, we just don't know how he's going to perform. Eight months out, he's obviously uh, been training hard, played in one or two behind closed door games. But, you know, in, in eight months since he's, he's played a full 90 minutes competitively uh, Brentford have got some injury problems Forest uh, obviously have got a lot of players out yeah. on the AFCON but you know their last two league games uh, beating United and winning at Newcastle I, I think that uh, this is a tough game for Brentford yeah, I just think that uh, they lost. Yeah, I had a look at uh, Notts Forest side that beat Man United. I think there were four players that have left to go to the AFCON. And I think that's a major. The two centre-halves are out. And against Brentford, another team that's make or break this weekend, Steve. Ivan Tony reported he's been scoring a few goals in those warm-up games or preparation games. And I know 9-10 to 10 is short, but I'm going to chance Brentford, even though they are the worst form team in the Premiership. They have lost 7-8. But I just wonder about Notts Forest, Steve. I know the, the Portuguese manager, Nuno, will have them organised. But, you know, without your two recognised centre-halves, I think it's going to be a difficult ask for Forest. Sheffield United, West Ham. I was on TalkSport yesterday and half of the fans want Moyes out. It's unbelievable. You know, they beat West Ham away. They beat Man United. They were singing his name. Get beat by Bristol City and they want him out, Steve. But... Uh, Travelling a Sheffield United won't be easy. I don't think it will be easy. I mean, they look fairly toothless, West Ham. Yeah. Obviously, Jared Bowen is out, which is, uh, you know, he's, he's, pretty, he's been pretty key to them this season. Yeah. Uh, Antonio's still out. You know, you're not sure where the goals will come from. Um, Sheffield United, on the other hand, are obviously having a pretty torrid time, but showing a little bit more fight under Chris Wilder. So I think this will be a tough game. I, I, can't, I don't see West Ham as being clear favourites here. Yeah, you know, 12 to 10 is short. You know, Sheffield United don't score too many goals. So I'd imagine uh, Chef, you know, West Ham will fancy their chances. And they are in good form, but that's not a gummy, even though 12 to 10 looks a, a nice price. Steve, Bournemouth, Liverpool. You know, last week I was all over Tottenham, Man United goals. Surely this has to be another goals game. You'd think so, and I just think Liverpool um, are going to be a little bit too strong for, for Bournemouth. You know, Bournemouth are playing you know, are, are one of the form teams. But yeah. I just think Liverpool, you know, if they watched uh, Man City last week and saw that Kevin De Bruyne is back and what he can do in, in the short short time he was playing, mm -hmm. I think they, they're going to look at this and think this is the game we need to win to, to stay top. Yeah. You know, I think over three and a half goals, I saw 12 to 10. Just looking at the stats, Steve, Liverpool have only kept two clean sheets in their 10 away league games, and that was against Burnley and Sheffield United. So Bournemouth will be a uh, cock -a hoop There has to be goals in this, Steve. Bournemouth play one way. You know, you've got to fancy Liverpool, but Liverpool and both teams to score 22 to 10. I think that's not a bad that's price. A price yeah. Yeah, I went uh, over three and a half goals. I think it's a shade under 12 to 10. So I think there'll be plenty of goals. Brighton Wolves, Steve. Another game Monday night. Yeah, you're not quite sure what you're going to get. I mean, uh, you know, Wolves obviously played the other night. Yeah. Both... You know, I th you know, I think they, Wolves are capable of getting something there, maybe yeah. holding Brighton. But uh, you know, Brighton, Brighton have had a nice uh, rest. Obviously, they they won in the cup. They didn't play last weekend. Yeah. Um, you know, well, you know, obviously injuries have been a key to them. We're not quite sure who's who's back. I think they're still without a few. But I think this will be a close game. I think Brighton might just edge it, but it would only be by a goal. Yeah, I saw Brighton to win over two and a half goals at 14 to 10. And Brighton to win both teams to score was shade over two to one. The thing I worry about Wolves, Steve, is they don't keep too many clean sheets away from home. And Brighton, their last 13 home league games, both teams have scored. So seven to 10, that looks the right way. But uh, 
I must say, I like the way Brighton dismantled Spurs. It should have been a lot more, even though Spurs did have chances to come back. But Brighton all day for me. On to the championship, Steve. Uh, Friday night, decent game. Should be Sunderland Hull. How do you see it? I think, I think so. Hull uh, have uh, shown a little bit of uh, form recently. I think this is the game that Sunderland have to win because uh, you know they drop points uh, on the road particularly and I think you know it's their home form that's going to keep them uh, sort of in, in around that sort of playoff race so I think I think they'll edge it but yeah. so I think it'll be a close game yeah I'm a, I like Sunderland see they got a little bit cocky for themselves when they played Newcastle and got caught not the best of results last week Hull City bad result in the cup I thought they'd go and beat Birmingham City and I think they lost a lot they lost last weekend to Norwich so definitely goals in that particular game seven or ten over two and a half goals but of the two teams I must say I do like Sunderland lunchtime kickoff Steve Swansea Southampton another victory for Southampton uh, it could well be and uh, especially with their uh, ex-manager Sort of going, yes. you know, Swansea's ex-manager going back there, Russell Martin. I think it'll be, uh, I think it'll be a close game. The Swansea, uh, they do flatter to see, but they try and play football. But I think Southampton are a real run, you know, sort of record-breaking run for them. And I think that they'll they'll continue. And uh, you know, I, I can see them sort of pushing for their, one of those top for second place very soon. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, unbeaten in 19, unbeaten in wait, eight away from home, but they have drawn three of the last four away from home. So it will give Swansea a chance, but for me, I don't see Southampton losing. Blackburn, Huddersfield, Steve. Blackburn were on the other day. They got cemented, but one thing about them, they do have a go. And I know eight to 10 is short on current form, but I think they'll beat Huddersfield. How do you see it? I think you're right. I think it's going to be. Look, I'm not quite sure what you're going to get with Huddersfield. Mm. At home, they've they've sort of you know give a good account of themselves. But and with Blackburn, you know, it's win or lose pretty much. Yeah. I think that they will start as favourites, but eight to ten might be a little bit short. Yeah, I know they've lost seven and nine, but I looked at the goal avenue there. Blackburn are seven to ten to score over one and a half goals, but definitely there should be goals in that particular game. Bristol City Watford, Steve. I bet your brothers cock a hoop the way the, the, the form they're in. I think they'll give Bristol City a good game. I think they will. I mean, Bristol City uh, obviously had a really tough game, uh, yeah. played really well. Um, I mean, they haven't got a lot of money, Bristol City, uh, even though they've got a billionaire owner, but he's obviously quite cautious. Yeah. Uh, they, they bring young players through and they really gave a good account of themselves, played some nice football. I think this would be a tough game for Watford. Um, I think Bristol, you know, for me, Bristol would certainly start as favourites. Yeah, I just think uh, Watford are uh, two to one to win, and two to one have scored over one and a half goals. I think they're going to have to score two goals to win. So that's the way I went. But uh, you know, I've seen Watford a couple of times, Steve. They're slowly getting uh, the gear, the act into gear. So I fancy Watford of the two sides. On to our next page in Middlesbrough, Rotherham. Surely, Steve, this should be one-way traffic. Yeah, you would expect so. Um, Rotherham don't travel at all well. And I think I think this should be a nailed on home win. Yeah, got a fancy Middlesbrough banker in all bets. Norwich City, West Brom, Steve, two decent sides or two sides that should be in the promotion playoff race. How do you see it? Yeah, this would be a really good game. I mean, West Brom uh, making it hard to beat, haven't lost many. Norwich just maybe just finding a little bit of form. I think this is going to be a be a really good game. I think Norwich might just start as favourites, but I, I could see that. I could see it ending as a score draw. Yeah, we've got this on ESPN, I think. So if I don't watch it live, you know, I'll tape it and watch it later stage. You know, both teams coming up. We were on West Brom last week when they thumped Blackburn. You know, two sides, Steve, I agree, this could be score draw written all over it. But uh, of the two sides, I've just got a funny feeling West Brom, it's got a funny feeling if someone's going to nick it, it'll be West Brom. But 24 to 10, the draw is a definitely live player. Plymouth, Argyle, Cardiff, Steve, how do you see it? Yeah, I mean, Plymouth at home are, are a strong side. Yeah. I, I fancy them. Cardiff have been very up and down. Not sure what you're going to get from them. But I think of the two, I just fancy Plymouth. I think there'll be goals, but I think Plymouth might just edge it. Yeah, I totally agree on the goals aspect. Unbeaten at eight at home, Plymouth or Gile. And seven at ten, both teams to score and over two and a half goals. While both teams to score and over two and a half goals, I saw nine to ten. Worth the play, especially the way Plymouth at home. They have a full go. And I don't expect any less here. QPR Morewall, Steve. The reports I read is 
Everybody thinks this is going to be a tight game. I think there's goals written all over this. Two desperate teams. I like more of the two teams, Steve, but I think QPR in serious trouble. They've got to go for it. How do you see it, though? Yeah, I mean, they are in trouble. I watched their game against Watford last week and, uh, you know, they had created a lot of chances, but, you know, found themselves sort of two down and it was, they never, never, never got back. Millwall were a little disappointing last week. I thought they'd do better than they did. Uh, surprise me but I think this will be a close game I think I think agree I think of the two I think Millwall will just start as favourites yeah I've got to find out how I really like Millwall my mate was a QPR fan and he was at the game he said they just can't put the ball away QPR and if they don't improve I think they're going down but he's hoping things will change here but I don't think so final page Steve Sheffield Wednesday Coventry two sides coming back into form who are you going yeah, for though okay. um, well, for me, I think you know Coventry uh, had a big win last week. Uh, yeah. Unless they had a player off, but you know they, they really are showing some form. And I think of the two, I, I certainly fancy Coventry. Yeah, I've got to agree. Even that, uh, since the new manager's taken over at Sheffield Wednesday, five wins and three defeats, so it gives them a chance. But Coventry and other teams slowly gathering pace for a promotion playoff place. Anyway, thirteen to ten. Not the best of prices, but they don't see them losing. Stoke City, Birmingham City, Steve. Tony Bobray's taken over. Good result beating Hull in the Cup in midweek. Can they upset Stoke here? I'm not sure they can. I think Stoke are just showing a little bit of form. Um, you know, I understand Hull uh, rotated quite a lot more than Birmingham did the other night. Okay. So whether or not that had a factor. But uh, I think I think it'd be a close game, but I just fancy Stoke to edge it. Yeah, and beaten in seven, so... Uh... 9-10 to 10 is short, but I win the goals avenue in that particular game. On to Sunday, and my Preston boys apparently were woeful in the first half, booed off, but played well in the second half when we beat Bristol City. You know, the last time I watched this game at Deepdale, when the Leeds keeper got sent off, no love lost between Yorkshire and Lancashire sides. Just don't see you know, Leeds United getting beat here, Steve. What do you think? No, I don't think, I don't think so either. I think... Uh, you know, I mean, they're obviously sort of keeping pace uh, near the top. I think Leeds will be too strong, I'm afraid. Yeah, nine wins and a draw in their last ten home league games, so it doesn't look good for my boys. And the big game of the weekend, Monday night, Steve, Leicester, Ipswich. How do you see it? Yeah, it really is a, it really is a big game. I think Leicester will want to bounce back after that sort of defeat at Coventry. Ipswich, look, I mean, they've surprised everybody, but, you know, with Southampton breathing down their uh, their necks, you know, this is the game they can't afford to lose. But I think Leicester, personally, I think Leicester might be just be a little bit too strong. Yeah, Steve, I think I'm all over Leicester this weekend to win by more than one's 23 to 10. It's 19 to 10 Leicester to win an over two and a half goals. You know, Ipswich have had a go every time I've watched them. I don't see them sitting back here. And uh, I must say that uh, Leicester City to me, I think absolute good things. Steve, as always, I need your best bet and value bet. Who are you going for? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm actually going to go for Leicester as my best bet. <laughs> I think that uh, they're going to sort of prove a point. And I think, you know, the, the, the home, home game against the, the team was sort of chasing them. And they could create a, a nice gap at the top if they win that. So yeah. for me, Leicester is my best bet. Your value bet, who are you going for? Yeah, I, I, I'm decided. But actually, I think I'm going to go for Nottingham Forest. I just think that uh, those are pretty decent odds for a team that uh, last time out won at Newcastle uh, mm -hmm. away. And I think that, uh, I just think, you know, Brentford, uh, even though Tony's back, you know, I think if they can nullify him, then mm -hmm. I think that uh, they should be too strong. Yeah, well, my best bet is the same as you, Steve. I think Leicester are good things and I've chanced more wall at two to one. I think at, at QPR who are struggling, you know, terrible. For, I think they've got the worst home record in England, QPR. So I'm going for Millwall. Let's see what happens. But Leicester, Monday night, obvious good things. Steve, thanks again and uh, have a happy birthday. And we'll speak to you over the weekend. All the best, Okay, Steve. Buzz. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Our regular UK correspondent, Stevie Bram. On to our weekend's uh, soccer exotics. And uh, we kick off with our score six on Saturday. And a bank at Arsenal to be too good at home for Crystal Palace. I'm going Southampton. I've thrown the draw in with Southampton at uh, Swansea City. I've gone the field in the Bristol City, Watford and Norwich City, West Brom games. Stoke City to avoid defeat at home against Birmingham City. And I'm chancing Brentford to beat Knott's Forest. Tough call, but 2-1-6.
On to our second Soccer Six of Saturday. I'm bankering Arsenal to beat Crystal Palace. Uh, if you can just go back, guys, it's uh, the field. Okay, well, we'll do the score 10 and we'll go back to the Soccer Six. Uh, here we go. Um, I banked Arsenal to beat Crystal Palace. The field in the Rayo Vallecano Los Palmas game. Freiburg to avoid defeat at home against Hoffenheim, as well as Heidenheim, win and draw against Wolfsburg. I've gone the field in the Villa Royale Real Mallorca game, and I'm chancing Brentford to beat Notts Forest at home, 2-1-6. On to our score 10. I'm bankering Arsenal to beat Crystal Palace, Southampton to avoid defeat at Swansea City, going for Blackburn Rovers to be too good at home for Huddersfield Town, Watford to avoid defeat at Bristol City and Middlesbrough to be too good at home for Rotherham United. On to our second page, I've got in the field in the Norwich City West Brom fixture. Plymouth Argyle win and draw at home against Cardiff City. The field in the Queen's Park Rangers Morwell clash. Coventry City win and draw at Sheffield United and going for Brentford to beat Nottingham Forest 2-88. On to our Soccer 13, which has a carryover, so it should be a nice big pool. I'm bankering Brentford to beat Notts Forest, Blackburn to beat Huddersfield Town, Watford win and draw at Bristol City, Middlesbrough to be too good at home for Rotherham United, West Brom win and draw at Norwich City, Plymouth Argyle to avoid defeat at home against Cardiff City, and Millwall win and draw at Queen's Park Rangers. On to our second page, I'm bankering Coventry City to win at Sheffield Wednesday, Stoke City to beat Birmingham City, Bristol Rovers win and draw at home against Blackpool, Bolton Wanderers win and draw at Leighton Orient, banking Derby County to win at Lincoln City, and Barnsley win and draw at Stevenage, 256. On to our budgies bets for the weekend, and I'm going over two and a half goals, both teams to score no in the Arsenal Crystal Palace game. I'm chancing Brentford to be with Ivan Tony back to beat Notts Forest at home, and over three and a half goals in the Bournemouth Liverpool fixture, 3,000 to 200. Our team goals only sides are Bournemouth, Brighton, Watford, and Leicester, all to score over one and a half goals or a minimum of two. 3,600 to 200. On to the championship, I'm going over two and a half goals in the Plymouth Cardiff, QPR Millwall and Leeds Preston matches and Leicester City to beat uh, Leicester City to beat Ipswich Town and over two and a half goals, 3,600 to 200. Our both teams to score sides are Plymouth Cardiff City, QPR Millwall, Stoke Birmingham City and Leeds United Preston North End. 2,400 to 200. On to Spain, where I'm going Atletico Madrid to beat Granada, and both teams to score in the Rayo Vallecano Las Palmas, Celta Vigo Real Sociedad, and Osasuna Catafe games, 3,000 to 200. And our Collis King, Six or Nixa, I'm going Arsenal to beat Crystal Palace, Brighton to beat Wolves, Leicester to beat Ipswich, Bayern Munich to beat Union Berlin, Roma to beat Hellas Verona, and Atletico Madrid to beat Granada, 2,400 to 200. Everybody in Durban, please be careful with the rains, and please remember to stay on side.